Hey Magic the Gathering players, it's time for me to go ahead and enchant you with a deck that um, will definitely win you the game and may have a few interesting uh, combinations of things, including a infinite combo. So why don't we go ahead and jump right into this uh, commander deck. Uh, today our commander is going to be uh, Sayona, captain of the Pileus. When Sayona, Captain of the Pileus, enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Now, the big thing about this deck that really makes it stand out is that this is really kind of cool that you can drop seven cards and go ahead and get a uh, an aura in your hand. But the really the big thing that's going to give you an infinite combo here is the second ability. So uh, whenever it becomes attached to a creature, you create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token. So um, you're going to see how this can go infinite here soon when I um, get to some of these cards in the deck. So... I'm going to go ahead and set this command commander aside for a few minutes and then we'll come back to her and I'll show you how kind of the combo works where you can, you know, get her to do some cool things. Uh, first card we got is Toski, Bear, Bear of Secrets. Um, this little squirrel, he can't be countered, so he's going to come out, can't be stopped. Um, he's indestructible, so nobody can target and remove him, which is really cool. Um, he attacks each combat of able, so... It doesn't really hurt you though if he just swings in for his little one and he just pings somebody from one. You get you get a card draw off of that. Um, and of course any other creatures you go ahead and get the get in, you get some card draw off of him. But um nonetheless, the idea here is that um you can also attach auras to him, of course, and get more things going on with him. But uh you know, he is indestructible, so if people want to block him, they can't. If they don't, they'll take the one damage and get get to draw a card. So He's got some good value built into him, for sure. Uh, next we got is Azusa, Lost But Seeking. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns. Um, that is super, super good. I mean, like, two lands every out every time you're putting them out. And if you're getting card draw and getting lands into your hand and she's out, you're going to be able to just keep putting lands out and ramping up super fast if you have her out on the field. Um, as for Sentinel... Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, or X is Esper Sentinel's power. Um, we got Courser of Crufix. You can play with the top card of your library revealed. Uh, you may play the top card of your library if it's a land card. So it gives you, again, another source to get lands off the top of your library so you can get to a spell, hopefully, on the next card. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So, super helpful there. Uh, next, we got this one. It's a flip card. It's it's from all the way back in, um, I think, Champions of Kamigawa. Um, at the end of turn, if Kitsune Mystic is enchanted by two or more enchantments, you can flip it. Um, when you flip it, it allows you to move an, enchan an enchantment. So, if you have an aura on something... You can go ahead and move that aura from one creature to the next. And remember, whenever you attach an aura to a creature, um, out pops a 1-1 one, one soldier token from Siona. So, again, it's a way to get some, some interesting things going on here. And it may also be a way to, you know, get a lot of little little guys out on the field. If you can dump a lot of mana into that and just keep moving that enchantment around, switching it all around. Um, you just hear where I'm going with this. So, definitely a super way to get some free guys uh, I don't know if this way can go infinite because you have to have infinite mana to get to dump into that. But I'll show you the infinite combo here soon and you can see where I'm going with it. Um, now, there are two ways to play this deck. In fact, I might make another version of this deck that has more um, an auras into it and, and less of the general sort of global enchantment kind of things. But I'm going to focus right now on kind of just the enchantment itself build and kind of see where, where this can go and take some of the cool things you can do with it. Um, we got Sutra Priest. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain one life. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Uh, next card we got is going to be Core Spirit Dancer. Um, she gets plus two plus two for each aura attached to it. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. So there are auras in here. You can go put them out and then get some card draw. Put them on her if you want. Uh, Archon of Sun's Grace, I definitely, uh, this is very, very synergistic with a deck like this because 
you can cast enchantments and out pops a pegasus. So you cast an enchantment, out pops a, pe pops a pegasus. Good to have some flying blockers or even use them for attack. You know, they fly, so definitely flies over any ground, um, ground creatures. So super, super useful. Uh, next we're going to do is this one. Halvar, God of Battle. Uh, creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. Um, at the beginning of each combat, you may attach target aura or equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. So again, um, this allows you to pop out some 1-1 soldiers off of Siona's ability. So there's some synergy there where you can move an enchantment around and start doing stuff with it. So it's a very useful card for a deck like this. Uh, next we got is Sanctum Reaver. You can tap it to add X mana of any one color where X is the number of enchantments you control. So you tap it, you have six enchantments and or enchantment, you know what I'm saying? You, get, you can get seven mana off of that just for having enchantments in play, which is just absolutely phenomenal. So good. Um, Femora of Enchantress, uh, whenever enchantment is put into your graveyard from play, you draw a card. So the big deal here is that uh, if somebody board wipes everything and um, state-based effect, I believe, is that when the enchantment is put into a graveyard, hmm, if they board wipe, she may go with it. So I'm not sure when the, if the trigger occurs simultaneously, but I will say this. If someone tries to target remove your enchantment, you will obviously draw up a card to replace that enchantment with, or, you know, you might get land or something else, but it gives you something to do if somebody's trying to pick off your enchantment, so... Uh, next card we got is Sigurda, Host of Herons. Uh, it has flying and hexproof spells your end abilities. Your opponent's control can't cause you to sacrifice permanent. So you can't lose your enchantments just for somebody playing a sacrifice deck. Or I think things like Annihilator that cause you to sacrifice things. Um, that would also, I believe, stop Annihilator. Because isn't that where you sacrifice a permanent when it swings in and so on? So super, super useful. Uh, next we got is Karametra, God of Harvests. Uh, indestructible, as long as your devotion to green and white is less than seven and isn't a creature. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a forest or plan, so it has built-in ramp, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. So super good for, for ramp. Um, and also landfall, if you wanted to ever put her in a white-green landfall deck, very, very, very useful. You're going to run landfall. Uh, next card we got is going to be Dryad of the Elysian Grove. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. So super, super useful to get some um, mana ramp on that on that creature. And of course, I had to throw her in because I think there's enough ramp where she'll be able to come out. She is eight cost, but it is commander. Turns do make it out to eight, nine, ten turns. So, you know, there's a high probability she can get out. Um, Avacyn, Angel of Hope, and other permanents you control are indestructible, and it has flying and vigilance, of course. avacyn has been around for a while, so I'm sure a lot of people know what she does, and she's a, kind of a legend in magic right now. Uh, next we got this guy. He is so super useful. Pretty much, this allows you to do anything you want on your turn without being messed with. So, guaranteed, whatever you want to do on your turn... You're going to go ahead and put this guy out. No one's going to counter it. They're not going to tap an artifact to tap a thing to do a thing to you. They just can't. So it's a super good card unless they remove it, of course. But if it's unremoved in play, then it's really... And then something like this isn't aggressive against somebody else. So it, it's not likely to be targeted before other stuff. There's Aggressive decks get targeted first. This is a non-aggressive card. It's really defensive and helps you out mostly but. It's not really hurting anybody else on the on the battlefield. It's just sort of hanging out there. Uh, flying uh, artifact and enchantment spells you, you cast cost one less to cast. I mean, obviously, it's a coupon card. You're just trying to get your stuff out cheaper. That's all. Cheap stuff. Cheap stuff is always good. Uh, same thing goes with this one. Enchantment spells you cost for one less to cast. So, gets them out faster. You get more mana. You get more card draw. Get them out faster. Kind of creates sort of a little... Um, recursive algorithm of growth if you can get these some of these things to synergize really well uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell you gain a life so gives you a little bit of life gain there uh, we got mesa enchantress uh, whenever you play an enchantment spell you may draw a card so again this deck is loaded in enchantments and enchantment creatures so with such a heavy um, amount of them you're definitely going to be able to draw a lot of cards here 
Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. So the blue player can't go counter spell or mana leak it or whatever. You're just going to basically be able to get out your enchantments at least onto the battlefield. Uh, unless somebody has targeted removal or can just then, you know, do something like that. Um, target land you control becomes a elemental creature with trample and haze line of turn where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still land. Could become useful. An interesting little sneaky way to sneak in some damage. I see someone's down to six life. You have six enchantments out. You pay the four. You swing in and just kill somebody for six because they don't have a blocker to block your enchanted land or something. Uh, next we got a Seaborn Muse. Uh, I, I can't say anything bad about this card. I mean, in Commander, it's a, it's a rock star. Uh, untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. Um, it, it really shines in decks that run Flash. I mean, it's pretty obvious that you're going to run this in a deck that plays a lot of Flash uh, cards that allow you to play stuff on other people's turns that are in, in other than instants and things. So it's good in this deck because it gives me the lands back and lets me uh, use some activated abilities and some other cool stuff. All right, so over here we got Verdurian Enchantress. Uh, when Enchantress is in play, you may immediately draw a card from your library each time you cast an enchantment. Uh, it's an oldie, but it's real goody. You know, if you're running an enchantment-heavy deck, again, you want to get more card draw, so, so super useful. Huge value on that. Uh, next we got is Nylea, God of the Hunt. It's indestructible. Uh, of course, she's a creature once you get uh, a threshold of, of um, five devotion in green. Um, it gives your creatures trample, not too great there, but it also gives your target creature a plus two, plus two until end of turn. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could buffer to an eight, eight indestructible, uh, god. So again, this is a, a good little card for four mana. I think it's a good add, you know, definitely good add. Anything that's indestructible is going to be, give your guys some permanence out in the field. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you draw a card. So, so super useful for getting stuff out. Um, next we're going to go ahead and, uh, whenever Eidolon of Blossoms or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, again, draw a card. So you can see where this is going. A lot of card draw built in. Um, and of course the idea here is I can run this deck almost like in three different ways. I can run it like what I'm doing here. I can also do, um, just heavy, heavy aura enchantment basis, or I could go to, um, what is it? Uh, more of a token build and have duplication of tokens. So... This is the one build that I started with, and then I saw how the potential could be a few different ways. So I may go ahead and build her a different way, and I'll show you how that deck runs uh, at a later date. Just this is the deck I wanted to run for, for now. So I only put in one Planeswalker, because, you know, I did put a card in there that's kind of anti-Planeswalkers, but um, I did put him in. Uh, you look at the top four cards of your library, you may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that on to your hand. The rest go on the bottom of your library in random order. You can exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until that, till target enchantment you do control leaves the battlefield. So if you got a, somebody that's doing something really annoying over there with an enchantment, you just punt it off the field and keep doing that if you can keep his um, loyalty up. Now, if you want to go ahead and go with um, number seven there, you can return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if somebody board wipes um, and then you plop this guy down, uh, if you do get them up to seven, one well, enchantments that are in your graveyard, you can just pull them back out and put them, put them where they need to go. So, so super useful. Now, we've made it to the infinite combo. So, what you want to do is, if you, you want to get this out. If you want to go infinite, you're going to want to either tutor for this and go get it, get it in your hand, get it on, on the battlefield. But once you get it out, read what it does, okay? So, it makes the creature indestructible, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach Shielded by Faith to that creature. So what you're going to want to do is, Siona, if there's a creature out, you want to attach that to the creature. Siona is going to pop out with a 1-1. All right. And then here I can go ahead and attach that to that 1-1. One, one, and then she's going to pop out another 1-1. One, one, and then another 1-1. One, one, and then another 1 and keep going. So you can go infinite with this. You can make infinite 1-1 one, one soldier creature tokens. Um, and then just put the enchantment back on the original thing you wanted to enchant if you wanted to. But you could create infinite guys because it allows you to move the enchantment wherever you want to go and just keep popping guys out. Um, very amazing little way to win the game. Um, and again, this is kind of a sleeper. People aren't going to just... You can play this 
on your creature, for example, um, you know, let's pick a creature. Let's say that one. All right, I play this on that. All right, and they see it and like, oh, okay, well, that thing's indestructible. Or they just want to protect their pegasi. And then you go and you're like, oh, and you little you put a little one one token out. And they're like, okay, whatever. And then you say, oh, I'm just going to move it to the token. And then you put it on the token. And then another, and you say, okay. And you put a counter next to it and you switch it up to two. And then you're going to go, oh, I'll do that again and again. And then, then you're just going to say, ah, you know what? I'll just do it 10 million times. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a, a sneaky way to just get it in there. Unless somebody knows what you're doing. If they can see what you're doing, then they'll pick up, they'll pick up on it. But yeah, you can see where that's going. It's a great way to get an infinite combo with something like this so uh, yeah it, it's not too hard to get it out too if you can tutor it you know it can come out pretty quick if you can if you get a tutor card in your hand uh celestial mantle uh enchant your creatures now this is going to be our auras uh it's on theme with commander of course um enchanted creature gets plus three plus three whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player double its controller's life total so so super useful uh, next card we're going to have is Snake Umbra. Uh, Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to opponent, you may draw a card. So again, you can drop it on one of those creatures that draws you a card and then draw two cards. It's just so good. For so cheap, it's so good. It does so many cool things. Um, Ancestral Mask is a huge, huge super buff. Considering there's so many enchantments or enchanted creatures in here, like enchantment creatures. So... If you have 10 of those things out, your creature's going to be a 20 20 to swing in with it. Like Toski, for example. Drop this on Toski. Swing in for, if you have 10 enchantments in play, for 21 21. And you get to draw a card too. And he's indestructible. So it's going to be real fun when that gets out. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and Dark Seal Mutation. Uh, enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature is a 0 1 insect artifact uh, with indestructible and loses all abilities. Now, this is an offensive card to someone else's commander or a very aggressive, specific card on the battlefield that's a creature. Yeah, so if you want to lock down someone's commander, you put this on it until they can, um, you know, destroy the enchantment in some way. If they can, it's going to lock their commander into the bug. If they board wipe, um, he's still in the bug unless it's, you know, like exiling, like all per whatever. Um, so I guess what I'm getting at here is if it is completely if any effect says destroy uh it's stuck inside the bug and then the other thing would be also if um they attempt to block or do anything with he's indestructible so the bug never goes away the commander never goes to the command zone it never goes to the library it never goes to the um exile so it never leaves the zone other than the battlefield and it's just sitting inside of this bug it's just kind of a, a really shenanigans -y way to deal with a really aggressive commander or just, you know, lock someone's, like, infinite combo out if people are using their commander for that. Like, if, you know, if I was playing against a deck, they, if they locked down Cylea there, she wouldn't be able to do, or Siona, excuse me, she wouldn't be able to do um, infinite combo. Angelic Destiny, uh, Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature gets plus four, plus four. Has flying and first strike and is an angel in addition to its other types. When enchanted creature dies, return this card to its hand. So you get the card back and then you can put it back out. So I like that, that the enchantment doesn't go to the graveyard. It goes back to my hand and I can replay it and get some of those triggers off of enchantments because it comes back to my hand and I can play it back. So I, I like the fact that I could get a trigger, an extra trigger out of that, you know, potential. Um, pattern of Rebirth. Uh, when enchanted creature dies, that creature's controller may search their library for a creature card, put that into the battlefield, then shuffle their library. So, so super useful there. Uh, next uh, aura we're going to do is um, enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three. And as at the beginning of each, again, each upkeep, so that means the other players at the table, put a plus one or a one one green sapperling creature token into play under your control. So, Again, it costs five. You'll probably get the five mana. You drop it on something. So you'll always get that one one to pop out every turn. So it's super, super useful. So, so epic. Um, fertile Ground. It's just an enchant lamb. Um, of course, you're, when your land is tapped for mana, it produces an additional one mana of any color. So it gets your affinity for, um, uh, what was it, uh, or uh, aura enchantments and things like that for the commander. Now, probably, I might just go ahead and replace this card. I just threw it in kind of as a ad for auras. Probably put a different aura in there at some point. 
Uh, next we got is All That Glitters. Uh, enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. So again, um, a super buff in a deck like this if you are running all enchantments and enchantment creatures. Uh, again, that's, that was the idea is to get some super heavy, unblockable, super undestructible beaters and just swing in with stuff and then and you just sit over there protected and everything. Now, so now we're going to get into some of the main enchantments here, just like the I think it's global or affect the entire, I'm sorry, the game or they affect you or whatever. So um, you may attach, uh, you may cast or of equipment or an equipment spells as though they had flash. So you can do that on other people's turns. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. So you just automatically put that uh, aura right onto a specific creature without... Um, you know, you can kind of see where this is going. Hold on. Go like this. Now, you can kind of move things around a little bit. You may attach it to target creature you control. So, definitely it has some... Um, really, the first ability is what I went for here. Because there's only one mana to get this out. It was cheap to have uh, the ability to cast the auras on other people's turns. So, it gives a little speed. Um, greater Auromancy. Um, other enchantments you control have Shroud. Enchanted creatures you control have Shroud. So very helpful to keep your stuff on field so they can't target and remove your enchantments. So, so super good. Um, and another thing too, um, you control the enchantment of the bug, by the way, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is your enchantment. You're doing it to somebody else's thing. So what happens here is that when you cast this, that thing gets shrouded so they can't even target and remove it if they could. So it just completely seals that bug. Um, you just basically seal their commander away for, for until end of game. Uh, smothering Tithe. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. Um, if the player doesn't, you create a colorless tr treasure artifact token with tap it. Sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color. So it gives you treasure tokens. So super useful in a deck like this. Um, you're going to have players that are drawing cards all the time in commander, so... You're just going to keep pumping out treasure tokens, generating mana. Sphere of Safety. I've won games with this card. I'll be totally honest with you. Um, in my Xur deck, I ran this, and there's so many enchantments in that that it nobody could attack me. There was a guy that did go infinite at the table and had infinite creatures with, like, infinite health or something. He couldn't do anything because this was out, and I was able to defeat that guy. I found a way I used Xur to defeat him, so it was kind of interesting, Xur deck. Uh, next card we got is Sigil of the Empty Throne. Whenever you play an enchantment spell, which there's plenty of those in here, you can put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying into play. So, again, great synergy, just like the Pegasus card. You pot, put a stoke, um, an angel into play, or you put an enchantment into play, and out pops a 4-4 angel. So, how It's only five. I mean, it's not going to be hard to get it out. Got a problem player. Um, lots of creatures, lots of problems. Well, you can make them not a problem anymore. It is an aura, and you put it on the player, and all their stuff is a 1-1 one -one with no abilities, including their commander. So their commander comes into play, it loses all its abilities. It's just a giant, giant shutdown. If you, you can use this as a huge, massive bargaining chip and say, hey, that guy's going off on there, guys. Um, I can play auras with Flash. I'll tell you what, um, I have the 8 mana open to cast this. Do we want to do this? And you can make bargains with the table and do all kinds of stuff. But once you do this to somebody, unless they can get rid of it or counter it, forget it. It's game over for them. They're probably not going to recover from that unless they can get rid of it. So, uh, Next you got is Enchantress's Presence. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. Super good. Uh, next we got is Sterling Grove. Uh, all other enchantments you control can't be targets of spells or abilities. Again, it gives them Shroud. Um, you can pay the one to sacrifice it and search your library for a different enchantment card and reveal that card, shuffle your library, and then put that card on top of it. So you can go and con get your combo piece for Siona to go infinite uh, with this card. So you pay the one, you sack it, um, you search your library for um, Shielded by Faith, drop it on something, pop out a 1-1, one, one, and then switch it over to the 1-1 one, one and create your infinite guys. And it's your infinite infinite wing con. So pretty cool. Uh, next we got a ban card. Uh, no, this isn't banned. Uh, this card bans other cards. So you play it, you know what people's commanders are because you can see them. They're sitting out on, you know, in the command zone. Um, you just play this, 
their commander is banned. Um, they can't play it the whole game unless they can get rid of the enchantment. So, you know, you better hope they're paying like, you know, enchantment removal or something, you know, split second enchantments or counters or who knows what. Uh, now this one, the whole idea here is it's almost like a cyclonic rift. And I'm going to tell you the strategy with this card. Um, it's only three costs. You don't want to cast this early though. And I'm going to explain why. You want to kind of build up your board state with just general enchantments. And then if you have some good creatures out in your hand, hold them back. Cast your enchantments. Get them out. Then let other people start putting out their commanders and putting out and then let them make tokens or whatever they're doing. Let them just keep building up board state. And then all of a sudden, drop that. Now what's going to happen when you do it is their creatures are just going to vanish. So their commanders, like if there's two or three commanders out, the commanders go into oblivion. Again, they don't, they go phase, they phase out. So they go to another dimension, basically. They don't hit the graveyard. They don't go into exile. They don't go into the library. So any commanders on the battlefield then go into like a, a into another nether realm or something. And then, um, of course, you can put the counters on. I think every turn, every time on your turn, you pull off a counter, you pull off a counter you see where I'm going with this, but if there were like eight, nine creatures out up amongst all the players, then this thing lasts for like eight, nine turns, and they're never going to get their commander back. It's just like, you pretty much, you can win the game with this card. I looked at it, and I'm like, does that do what I think it does? So I don't play my stuff. I play it while everybody else, everybody else plays their stuff. I put it out. Their stuff goes into nowhere. They can't, it doesn't even go to their hand, like um, Oblivion, um, um, like Cyclonic Rift. So I'm like, uh, wow, okay. I can see how this card is really good. People just don't realize that. Uh, next one we got is Privileged Position. Uh, other permits you control have hex free. Super good. Keeps people from putting your stuff with spells. Um, land tax. If you're low on lands, you got land tax. Well, now you're not low on lands anymore. Now are you? So super useful. Um, yeah, you'll always have lands with land tax. Guarantee there's, there's one player. Um, I did throw in Carpet of Flowers if there's a blue player out there. If they got some basic islands out or, you know, combo lands that have, like, island planes or island or triomes with the island in it, um, they tap that or, or whatever. If that comes into play, well, guess what? You get mana from them, too. So it's like you're getting a win-win. You're getting mana off of other people's mana, which is kind of cool. Um, next we got is Island Sanctuary. I love this card. I'll tell you what. You know, I have turtled myself in so hard with this card all i'm gonna say is like all right so if they don't have any major flyers all right and then say i make a infinite a little army of of little guys or even just big creatures you the car the deck itself is built to have a lot of card draw on on those different cards so you're going to get your card draw in and then you just play this you just don't do a draw phrase and they just can't attack you you're just basically a you're averting a being a target and then a, a player like that is going to be like, well, I can't attack this person. So I'll just attack somebody else at the table. So it gives it deflects any kind of major damage coming your way to someone else. This card, I don't know how this thing isn't more expensive than it already is. And it's like, it was like 15 bucks or something. Maybe not even that. I don't know. During your upkeep, if one or one of your opponents controls three or more creatures, you sacrifice this you search your library if it did two creature cards and put those into play. Shuffle your library. So you just put them into play. Just I could go get Avacyn. <laughs> Avacyn's a creature. I put this out and I'm just going to drop Avacyn. And one of the gods, let's just say, or something else. I can go get anything. Avacyn. Just, it's just a tutor for Avacyn. It's just so broken. It's so good. Oh my god. Guys, seriously. That's so good. Oh my god. Um, Alright, so next card we got, uh, these are going to be our instants. We got a tutor. Obviously, you're going to want to tutor up your combo piece if you get this. Um, the idea here with this is that you just go get um, Shielded by Faith. It's an enchantment. And just play it and put it out <laughs> and win the game. Once you, If you have Sayona out, you're going to be able to make infinite guys. Um, Teferi's Protection, I threw in this deck because it really shines in here. Um, obviously it phases all your stuff out. Again, it has phasing, but it's designed to protect you from, you know, from some kind of major, major annihilation. Super amazing protection card. So good. Um, next we got, it's going to be now, oh, another strategy with Teferi is that 
let's say you make your infinite guys, okay, and you're worried about a board wipe. Like one of the other players is going to drop a board wipe on you. Why don't you drop to fairy? Okay. Here's how this goes. Okay, because remember your your one one guys are summoning sick. They come into play. They're not. They don't have haste. So what you're going to want to do if you have a million one ones, you drop um, to fairy's protection. All your stuff phases out. Okay. And you're protected, so the whole table goes round, and then it comes back to you, and all your guys are not summoning six. So you, you automatically win the game when it gets back to your turn, if they can't do anything on your turn and take, I don't know, board wipe you some weird way with an instant, which I don't think there are any instant board wipes. There might be a couple, but not offhand that I can know. But you see how the value of Teferi's protection in this deck works. Got infinite guys, you protect them, because remember, if someone could board wipe, uh, yeah, you want to run that combo if you can. It is an instant, so if you want to, um, I don't have tutors for instance, obviously, but, you know, you can, if you do have this, definitely it's going to be a way to win. Uh, next we got is Congregation at Dawn. I didn't realize how good this card could be um, until I read it. I was like, wait a second here. Search your library for up to three creature cards, reveal them, shuffle your library, and then put those cards on top of it in any order. So what you can do, um, maybe you want to get some of those coupon-y, can draw you card kind of deal, um, give you card draw. You can just stack your top three with card draw little guys, like two, and then that or the things that reduce your enchantment cost. So you just popping out enchantments real quick, or generating mana, or maybe go get your mana generator or anything. I just saw useful this or stack up Avacyn right there on the top if you need her. I thought that was a great card, you know, to stack up three different creatures on the top. Not as good as Defense of the Heart, but hey, you know, it's still pretty good. Uh, destroy all creatures with no enchantments on them. So most of your stuff is either enchantment creatures or enchantments, or you might have a few that aren't, or maybe there's some creatures that are indestructible. Serum go with this, so high probability you'll get this off, and it'll damage all your opponents much worse than it will you. Um, again, this of, of course, it's like a nuke button in case you need it. Idyllic Tutor, you know what to do with tutors. Go get your stuff you need, and, you know, try to get that infinite combo out. Now, we're almost done, guys. This was a longer video, because it was a really interesting deck, and I think this one's going to be a real game winner for a lot of people. I hope they enjoy it. Uh, we're just going to hit some of these rocks. Um, Soul Ring, I'm not going to tell you what it does. You better know what a soul ring does at this point if you're watching this video. Um, a signet, you want to throw in a Selesnya signet. I dropped in a Thran Dynamo. I think you know what it does. Obviously, this guy, Arcane Signet, gets you a man of any color of your commander's identity. Aha! Guess what? See what we got here? Why is that in there? You think, okay. Remember what I just said? Siona, she makes 1-1s, one right? Other things will make cause those 1-1s to pop out. Equip creature gets plus one, negative one. So you equip um, Skull Clamp to that creature. It dies, that token. And when it dies, you draw two cards. You can literally decide how many cards you want to draw. Drop it on your one, one, it kills it. You draw two cards. Pay the one, drop it on another one. Kills it. You draw two more cards. Drop it on another one. You kill it. You, get draw, you just always draw on cards in your hand. So... You can see why this deck is just going to run really well and have all kinds of great value engines built in. Um, one of my favorites, one of my favorite lockdown things and super benefit cards, uh, players can't activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities. Hey, that poor Super Friends player, he's going to beg to have this thing removed. He's going to be over there with Super Friends just staring at his board and being like, I can't do squat with these. And, of course, at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. So broken. Spells you cost for one less to cast. Creatures get plus one, plus one. I can't say enough good things about this card. I mean, yeah, it's six, anything, but there's lots of mana growth in this deck, so I don't see any issues. Here's a little annoying thing. Um, creatures can't attack you or Planeswalker you control unless the controller pays life for those creatures. So it's two life for each one of those, so... You're not going to have somebody with five creatures swing into you just to lose ten life. You might. You might. Don't get me wrong. If they think they got a win on you, they might do it. But, again, a lot of people are hesitant to watch their life total get whittled away just to attack you and assume that you don't have a way to stop them. So, you never know. Um, next we got is our non-basics. Um, there's going to be some good ones in here. You got to have the Reliquary Tower in there. I'm almost tempted to throw in a... Um, no maximum hand size, you know, uh, on an artifact, but 
Got to have a Rook Reliquary Tower. There's a lot of card draw in this deck. Um, of course, one of my favorites, Scorched Ruins, gets me four colorless mana. I just have to tap. Or no, I, um, I sacrifice two untapped lands and drop them in there and see where that's going. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, this one. This is a reserve list card from way back in the day, Urza Saga. If you have this, I, you got to put it in this deck. It's pretty much a given. You add uh, one mana, one white mana for each enchantment you control. Sarah's Sanctum. If you got, if you're a whale and can afford to just buy this, by all means. But if you had it from when you're collecting at one point or bought it when it's cheaper, you definitely want to throw. If you have at least one copy of this drop in this deck, it's going to shine really well. Get you all that mana you need. Next we got is um, Core Haven. I threw it in because you can pay two to prevent all damage that will be dealt to target attack by target attacking creature this turn. So somebody swings in with a weird 2020 whatever. You pay the two, tap the land. Um, you prevent all damage. Prevent all damage. Really super good land. But people don't don't see that coming sometimes. Uh, if your enchantments go to the graveyard, well, go get them back. Pay two, tap it. Target enchantment card from your graveyard goes to the top of your library. They get they board wipe your enchantments. Well, just go get them back. I mean, that's the idea. Um, obviously, that's pretty pretty basic. Nothing too amazing there. It comes into play tapped, but you eventually, you know, obviously you can get the two mana out of it, so that's useful. Mm, uh, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you can you control two or more basic lands. So uh, next, of course, is Fortified Village. Let's see what it does. And we got this one, Razor Verge Thicket. Yeah, I know if you, of course, this is one if you control two or fewer lands. Comes into play, untapped. Fast land. Uh, Sun Petal Grove. You have to have at least one forest or plains for it to come into play untapped. Uh, this one doesn't matter. It's your plan, Commander, so it's going to come into play untapped. Um, this one, of course, is a uh, ramp card. You pay the two, sack it to go get um, a forest uh, and a plains card and put them in the battlefield tab. So, good way to ramp up. And a commander staple, of course, is Myriad Landscape. Again, a ramp card. Guys, that's it. That's it. We're going to mic drop this one. This is a really good deck. I, I just looked at the potential of what we could do here. I will keep this one together. Um, now, there are some interesting, like, variants of this. I could throw in more auras into the deck. Um, I could do that, definitely. I could do some interesting things with token generation. Like, I could do more with generating the tokens but ideally if you're just going for a win i think you know uh, the uh, the aura deck with more auras would even be maybe a bit more effective than this but this one is designed for a lot of control of your state protection plus getting you that win con so you want it, a lot of the card draw in here is to get you to either a tutor to get to um uh, you know, get get your uh, Shielded by Faith out or one of those other things. So you can go ahead and generate those tokens. And, of course, if you have Teferi in hand and, your, and Shielded by Faith, just you win. You probably won the game. At that point, it's an auto win if, unless somebody has something really, really effective to deal with that. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this deck. It was fun building it. I had a good time. It was kind of a challenge at first, but then I started kind of gathering up a lot of enchantments and R's and stuff. And I was like, hey, this is going to be fun. I can't wait to build this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe to my videos. Uh, if you'd like to leave some comments. If you love this deck, if you got any suggestions for it to buff it even more, um, by all means, I'm always open to all those kind of things. But uh, guys, always thanks for watching my videos. And I will see you again soon with another amazing deck. Bye.